Hey, my name is Justin Miller, and we're going to talk about low raw antennas, specifically for helium hotspot mining. Now, low raw stands for long range, and it's basically designed to send low amounts of data at a long distance with a low amount of packet loss. And it does the job very well. In the United States, it uses the 915 megahertz area as a signal. I know in other countries it's a bit different, but I'm gonna focus on it right here. And for a standard uh, rack wireless miner, you're gonna get a 2.3 dBi antenna. Now, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is uh, you don't want this. This, this ain't gonna make you a lot of H and T. So get rid of it and go out to Rack's website and get the eight DBI omnidirectional antenna. Eight DBI omnidirectional antenna. Comes with mounts, uh, comes with a pigtail to connect it. And uh, as you can see behind me, uh, I mount them like so in attics. Now, to be more specific, if someone is gonna ask me best placement, first I would say on the roof as high up as you can. The second placement I would say would be in the attic, which is a more preferable option uh, because it's easier access, has access to Wi-Fi, and most likely access to power. Um, the third option would be get it on as high a floor as possible in a window. And beyond that, if you can't do those three, don't get into helium mining because you're not going to make a lot of money. You're going to get low rewards. You're going to be very sad. You're going to cry a little bit. Go call your mom and uh, be be just, you know, be extremely upset that you waited for like three hours hitting a button over and over and over again at get minted trying to get a miner and you know this is what you got you got like you know two dollars a day so don't do it that way uh if you can do it the other ways i recommend you get one and make a lot of hnt okay that all being said let's talk about it from a different perspective now many of you think 5.8 or some of you say, oh yeah, I'm using the default 2.3 antenna and it is just fine. And if it works for you, it works for you. I'm not gonna knock you, but it hasn't worked for me. Uh, generally speaking, the houses that I'm dealing with are in the suburbs. They are one or two level houses. And uh, I find that an 8 dBi antenna works best. Now, there are two reasons that you'd want an 8 dBi antenna. One is for range and one is for loss. And I talk about it, not about gain, but about loss, because what's, I mean, what's going to happen when you use an antenna? First of all, there is the loss uh, from what's around you, as well as the loss about what's around the antennas that you are trying to beacon. So keep those two things in mind. And at the end of the day, you say, wow, uh, I'm better off with a higher DBI antenna than a lower DBI antenna. Now, the antenna maximum gain you can get is 9 DBI. That is what Helium allows, and if you have it more than that, they are going to bring your power down. So 9 is what you got to work with. I said 8 dBi antenna because that is what Rack Wireless sells, but you can get 9, hell, you can get 10, you can get 12, and depending on what's going to be around your antenna, uh, you're going to want to think about that. Before we talk about actually what's around the antenna, let's just talk about this image right here. Okay. I see this image everywhere. People always look at it saying, ooh, look at the angle. Okay, well, with this angle, I need a 5.8 dBi antenna. Or, yes, I'm on a high rise, so I need, I need the 2.3. And I get it in a way, but first of all, those numbers, those degree of angle, it's not true. That doesn't account for every antenna out there. Here, here's some Elcom antennas, okay? Look at it. The, the angle that they're listing isn't the same as the other one that you just saw. So I don't like to think of it like that. I think of it as a balloon, right? That is how the signal gets out, and certainly 360 degrees omnidirectional, but the signal comes out like a balloon. So certainly uh, it goes above and below that antenna. 
uh, if it is something like 2.3 dBi, and that is certainly great if you are in a high rise on the 20th story, or maybe even on the 10th story, uh, with so many hotspots around you uh, that you need to uh, hit. But you know what? Even when I say that, all I can think of is, yeah, you're only going to be in a high rise if you're in downtown and it's totally saturated, in which case all of those hotspots have like a 0.15 reward scale. And you don't want those hotspots. You want the ones that are far away from you that are at a reward scale of one. Um, so range is kind of important in all of this. Uh, now, certainly the higher gain it is, uh, the lower, um, the lower spread you're going to get coming out of, uh, the antenna. And that's, you know, some of these images are showing right now. These are the ones I prefer to look at thinking of it as a very long balloon stretched out as opposed to one that's close up. Uh, I, these work better for me to understand why I am choosing 8 dBi instead of 5.8 dBi. Um, certainly, if you were able to get your antenna way above the roof, uh, then yeah, maybe you want a 5.8, um, just like I'm talking about being in a high rise. But generally speaking, I'm, I'm guessing most of us can only get it at the max 8, 10 meters up uh depending on if we live in a you know a uh, house with two floors and whether we can get it maybe an extra 10 feet above the roof um so that being said yeah 8 dbi that's why i go for okay so let's talk about it in terms of uh that loss and when i think of loss i think of punching through that loss okay so here are some numbers to help you figure out loss through different objects yeah. Okay. So when you look at that and you're thinking, okay, look at that loss through a, a quarter inch uh, amount of glass. All right. Consider this double pane glass in uh, your house. Let's just assume for a second it is uh, one eighth. So a uh, double pane. So that's two of those because one eighth is a uh, double strength, but uh, two of those uh, makes uh, a quarter. So uh, that's what you're looking at in terms of DBI loss through a standard window. Not even a window downtown that, uh, you know, might have triple pane glass or something like that. So, you know, you can look at the different uh, glass levels there. But my point being is if you look at the numbers of the house, the brick that is surrounding the house, assuming it's brick and it's not concrete or something else, uh, even that 3.5 thickness, that's a, a lot to punch through with a signal. And that's what I think about. I think about that amount plus the amount from your house. So the amount from your house, the amount from their house in order to hit that signal. And that's why I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to do 3 dBi. That's crazy. I don't want to do 5.8 dBi. I want to get up high as I can to punch through those houses. I want to do the max, which would be 9 Okay, now that being said, let's talk about the other side of loss. Let's say we're putting an antenna all the way up, but we still want the hot spot to be down at the house. Well, there is loss for coaxial cable, which is pretty high, but if you figure the DBI of the antenna and equate it, you could probably equal it out to get it somewhere around nine if you wanted to. But what has way less loss is LMR 400 cable. So that is what I'd suggest you use. Okay, um, so now that you know some of this, you can kind of figure out, okay, so what we're talking about is in somewhat distance, but let's let's face it, I mean, you already add uh, the punching through your house and punching through their house, and that loss uh, is, is going to be enough that it's, you're not actually going to go that far. Now, I say that, but I've looked at how far uh, my antennas can go, and that tends to be up to like 60 kilometers. So, um, yeah, and that's another reason why then I say the roof. Okay, look at the, the numbers that they have there for three inches of plywood, okay, or three inches of wood. A roof, general, generally speaking, a roof is a three eighths inch plywood and shingles, right? We're not talking about metal. And if you have foil up there, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, 
So we're just saying, assuming you don't have foil, maybe you have spray foam or something else that's insulating your attic, hopefully. Um, but if we're only dealing with plywood and shingles, yeah, it's going to bang right through that. That is that is nothing for the signal. And hopefully, you know, we're dealing with somebody else who's smart enough to put an antenna in an area like that. So then we've we've got, we don't have much lowering the gain to get the signal from your house to their house. And that's my point. That is why I always say, if you're gonna put it somewhere, if you can't put it on the roof because it's hard to get up there and you don't wanna die because it's freaking high up and you know, you're gonna be doing it while it's raining in the dark for no apparent reason, why were you stupid enough to decide to do that? And then you fall and then you break your neck and then you don't make any H and T. Instead, your, your wife or your kids make all the H and T. Okay, so that's why I say put it in the attic. Um, I have been doing this. Yes, uh, I have found most attic, uh, most accesses to the attic are located in uh, the closet of somebody's room. And hopefully around there, there is a plug in the wall. You, you may have to honestly, uh, if you can't just ask them and get approval to kind of wire it through that that uh, access point to get into the attic uh, and you don't have uh, power in the attic, you may need to drill a hole somewhere. Uh, hopefully they'll be cool with that. But uh, yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about in terms of uh, LoRa antennas. So, hey, thank you for watching and happy mining. Anybody want a Mountain Dew? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get one.